Okay, highways and streets, and I move 1,506,153,000. Um, Second. Okay. <clears throat> well, Keith, are you able to follow along in the section in the questions? So we'll let you open with that. Okay. Um, so the first question, what specific raises uh, Bob wage increase three? That's a result of 1.25% uh, non-union raises, 1.25% for the Teamsters, and 3.25% for the S, uh, SEA employees. That also includes step increases within those raises. They get certain employees, because of the length of time, get step increases. I did not go through, take the time uh, to, um, to split them up by job title and percentage. Um, so that's really the information that I have for you. If you have a specific question, we don't, we have not hired any new employees. This is all contractual or selectmen's uh, decision on what those union rate, what the uh, non-union, well, what all the raises are. So if you have a specific question about a, a specific, or uh, question about a specific job title, I can give you that. But I, I just got these things at 10.30 this morning and had, a, had enough time just getting through this list and get prepared for tonight. So I do not have the time to go and develop a list of every single employee and what their uh, percentage is. But basically it is the non-union employees that only includes my immediate management team, which is Chris. Uh, Mike Doobie and Mike Jingris and myself received 1.25 and the Teamsters is, um, I can go through those people but not the, you know, 30 of the, the other employees. I think the important thing we're looking at here is that that 9.03 is just a change from last year's budget to this budget because we had some things hanging out there but no one is in fact getting a 9% raise. There, no. Everything is... The highest increase is, is what, one and uh, a half? I believe it's 3.25 for the SEA employees. 3.25. And that would be a union contract? That yes. But like I said, just keep in mind also that even if you add it up with the number of employees, some employees got step increases as well. So they would actually, in fact, get, in theory, get more than a 3.25% raise. Is there catch up in this area, Keith? Pardon me? Is there any catch up in this area? Catch up. Catching up. You know, we're catching up with steps or just the steps they're entitled to. The, the way the union contract worked is that, because for the last seven years, the SEA employees haven't been getting raises. So some of them are jumping ahead because the way these steps are set up is based on length of time. So if they were in, say, um, step one, for being here for three years, but now they're here 10 years, they're actually jumping up to that step that would be in the 10-year category. Is that what you're talking about? Well, yeah, because yeah. how many years do they go without a contract? It's my understanding, seven years. Seven years without a contract. <clears throat> and that's what I mean, that catch-up yes, yes, is yes. reflected in this amount. It is. Not that there's exorbitant raises here. Just right. the fact that they're catching up with steps. Right. So it's an atypical year. Right. All right. I think that answers my question on that one. Uh, can you indicate, or you indicate 17 people are on this line item? Yeah, and we counted 17 here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in S&D, uh, S&D stands for Sewer and Drains uh, Division. Now, Keith. None of these show up as contractual on the default budget, mm -hmm. which they should, right? Identify themselves. I as would defer that to Christy on that question there. Well, he, he put I, out I, to raise this, Christy, and the default budget doesn't show anything here as contractual mm -hmm. for uh, administration on the very first line. 4240.1.110. I think on all the wages, it's just noted as wages. Well, no, some of them, you get the words contractual on a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> I did, but I don't think on the wages that, um, I don't see contractual by any of the wage lines. I think it's, I just, most of the notes 
where it kept the same as what uh, Mike had had last year. Um, but on most of the, on all the wage lines, it literally just says wages. It does not say contractual. Yeah, you're right there. They are contractual. Uh, most of them are contractual because they are related to collective bargaining agreements. I see that. Oh. Now, are the step increases that are relative to, long, to longevity, are they baked into the CBA as well? Yes, they are. Keith, we'll let you move on. Sure. Uh, B, building maintenance, hydraulic lift, $15,000. Please explain. That lift is approximately 30 years old. It's a hydraulic lift. Uh, we have it inspected, and the uh, pistons are leaking. It's totally corroded. Uh, it's to the point of being unsafe uh, for our employees. It has a 15,000-pound weight limit. Um, and it's just something that's been long overdue to, to be replaced. Um, what, what, where is it? Where is it located? It's right in the first bay. If you well, actually, if you go into my office, right to the left, it's yeah. it's right there. So you're lifting your vehicle. And it's up yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's in the garage. It's in the garage. No, I mean it's for vehicle lifting. Right. 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 Yeah. So um, so it's you know a productivity issue, but mainly it's a safety issue. Are you buying a new one? Yes. Gas and diesel fuel need adjustment. Well, that's the, the old, this is the suggestion that was made here a few weeks ago that the gas prices are falling. They're like 282, 285 a gallon right now, regular. Right. I test 80, 89, it's 309. Well, when so I came up here that we would. Yeah. Looking forward to so now they're going back up again. When I, um, yes, and when I prepared my budget, I went on the, uh, as I do every year, the Department of Energy's um, website, and they have a specific uh, U.S. Energy Administra Information Administration, and they have what is the outlook for gasoline prices for 2014 and 2015, and pretty much they're saying the projected Projection for average retail price in 2015 is 339. So it's not thinking that we're going to be getting it in the two dollar range for next year, and we have to plan for the whole year. So um, the town manager and I went through those, and we looked at last year, you know, historical use and the numbers that we came up with. In fact, I think he adjusted a couple of my numbers even upwards a little bit more. To, to what, cover any. Uh, what did you use last year? Do you remember? <clears throat> what did I use for? The formula last year. I, I go by this every year. I go on this website and I get an idea of what the, how, you know, what the prices are going to be doing. No, Whether, I mean, I understand that. Yeah, do I don't remember off the top of my head. I, I don't Price remember exactly what you're talking okay. about. Right. I mean, it, so you're using that 339. No, what I'm using is that is I looked at that at what the gas uh, what the gas prices were when I prepared the budget, and then I looked at this. This was about average. So what we are using, what we're seeing out in the uh, you know for consumer prices right now. So I just looked at it like there's not going to be a dramatic increase or a decrease. So we just based it on historical numbers. But the gas prices, we go through the state of New Hampshire, the state, we get the state's bid, which is a pretty good deal, and we do the best we can, but it's very hard to project what the gas prices are going to be doing. So there's no, you know, real easy formula to use to pinpoint what those prices for both diesel and gas are going to be. So it, it's somewhat of a guesstimate yeah, we're, at we're this point have to hold in time. On that, I think, right now until we get a better fix on it. Yeah, I'm just trying to establish how we derived it a number oh, last year that, if we're uh, using this report. Jamie is working that. I, I just use this as a guide. I don't use yeah. that. I don't say, okay, it's 339 and we use that. This is just a guide for trucking companies to look at for their projections for the following year. Mm -hmm. But it's at least something to tell us. I mean, if that said that they're going to drop down to 250 or go up to 450, then I'd be more concerned and we'd adjust them you know, accordingly. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of a rough guide. Do you, do you you track how many gallons of fuel you're using, the gasoline or diesel? Yes. If you're not, you do? Well, yeah, we get reports. How many <laughs> gallons? Yes. How many gallons? Yes. Yeah, the reports come back that way. <coughs> okay, good. That's mm -hmm. good. So then you have a, a good number to multiply by if right. you get a number that you believe in. Right. And, and that's across the board for, you know, police, fire. We all buy from the same place. Yeah. Keith, we understand that. We're just... 
Yeah, Where we, is that location? By we the know way? it's a magic ball this year, especially since all of a sudden gas prices took such a huge dip. Mm -hmm. But we also Liberty know Lane, that the state, the state buys a quantity, so that price is not Liberty necessarily Lane. reflected. However, there was a formula, and I don't know that we saw the gallon price that it ended up at last year that was put into the budget. Yeah, I, I, if I may, there, there are a couple of different ways that people do this, and, and again, with some of the ups and downs of the default budgets, I can speak to my <coughs> old, old uh, budget. We, we kind of went by usage as opposed to breaking it down by gallon. Right. And in general, the way the state contract works, that protects us from a huge spike going up. It's allowing us to get a max ceiling where we're going to be on gallon price. Mm -hmm. We have previously run into this where we're buying from the state. We're not exclusive to them. Right. Where the pump price went lower and it was more advantageous to use a commercial buyer and do the paperwork to submit for the tax differential. We have done that in the past. That's always an option for us. It's finding that break point because there's a substantial amount of paperwork to be done to recoup that that tax money. So it's just, I, I agree with Jerry, we should take a look at this more globally we are. Yeah. We're just trying to find out when that contract expiration period is so we know what that next cap will be. Yeah. And we've, we've all agreed here already, Keith, we're not picking you apart, we're just trying to yeah. get all the information we so can. Goes, goes globally everybody. when we get yeah. done, no, it's fine. Mm -hmm. we're just going to go through all, all the fuel lines. Yeah, I got it. Do you know a time frame when that would be done? What's at the state contract? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're trying to pin that down. I, my recollection is sometime late fall is when those those are updated. But again, I, I don't want to be locked in. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, vehicle maintenance ninety seven thousand. Need to tell on cost increases. Facts, please. Um, really, well, the good news is that we're doing. Uh, Mike Jingris, the maintenance manager, is is got a computer program that we've bought that we can track. All the maintenance uh, materials and labor cost on all equipment. So as equipment comes in, whether it's uh, from police, fire, <laughs> recreation, building inspection, or public works, we develop a work order and we track that. So we can, at any point in time, get a good, for the first time, get a good record of all the uh, costs that go into maintaining our vehicles. Up until recently, up until we developed this program or bought, got this program, we were just tracking the material cost. That being said, I think the reasons that you're seeing a dramatic increase are for a couple of reasons. One is that now for the first time, instead of having just one full-time mechanic and one, part, uh, one uh, mechanics helper, we have two professional mechanics which allows us to do more work on vehicles. So more work is actually getting done where work was not getting done on some of our vehicles uh, in the past just because we didn't have the manpower to do that, that work. So that results in more parts and, and cost to those vehicles. The other factor really is, is, is the uh, average age of our vehicles is 12 years old. <coughs> and our, we're not keeping up with, even though we're spending money on a yearly basis on replacing our vehicles and, and, and equipment, we're really not keeping up uh, with a good uh, replacement plan as far as being able to uh, replace equipment when it should be uh, replaced. And uh, vehicles, and this is what I've been saying about the town's infrastructure since I've been here, is that the older it gets, it accelerates in more cost to, um, to, to, to repair it and to maintain it. So we're, we're trying to catch up with, with the vehicles so that we're having them replaced on a regular basis, um, but it's difficult between the default budget and you know, the limitations that we have on the overall you know, worn article amount. Can you talk about what the major driver here with this forty thousand? The major repair is forty thousand. Can you give a couple, two, three examples on what made up that forty thousand? Mike, you, you have some, right? I don't know if Mike speak to that. Jump right in there. Can you repeat the question, please, sir? Yeah. So I'm looking at the uh, vehicle maintenance. It's ninety-seven thousand. The big driver is the forty thousand for major repairs, and I'm just wondering what what kind of major repairs took place to make up that you're, you're actually, this is a forecasted budget, so mm -hmm. what kind of major repairs do you think are coming down your 
coming your way or well the thing is Mrs. Zanoy is the average age roughly is 12 years old yeah that's what you said. Uh, um Due to inclement conditions, we have corrosive conditions now on all of our vehicles, so rust and corrosion is a huge factor. Um, to forecast what are coming down, I would, I can't, I cannot give you that, but I can see with a lot of our stuff, it's a lot of transmission issues, um, a lot of rust. We have oil pans that are failing. Um, but you had some specific ones that you mentioned yeah, to me. What have you spent this year for major repairs? On Let's this put it that year. way. Um, for major repairs. Yeah. So take a look at that. <laughs> I have four examples of some vehicles that were pretty substantial. Okay, can we, can we Yep. Um, for one of our vehicles, we had some substantial transmission issues that wound up being about $3,000 to fix mm -hmm. there. Um, two of our dump trucks were both the Max, which one is 26 years old and one is 24 years old. Um, in total, that vehicle's been about $20,000 over its lifetime, and in, within the last year, it's been about $3,000 due to suspension and exhaust. Number 42 has had um, fuel tank problems. All the springs have had to be replaced. Pretty much a hydraulic hose over uh, rebuilt, and that one's been about $2,100. And our other Mack truck ran about $3,200, and that was due to the fact of brakes all the way around the brake cans were literally rusting out of it. And that's a very common thing we're finding with a lot of our trucks is the air brake system is literally rotting out of it. <clears throat> okay, looking back on uh, 12 and 13, 96,000, 97,000, 96 and 12, 97 and 13, and 14 due to day 75, so 97 isn't really that far out of line. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can tell you since I've been here since 2013, 2013 was a very expensive year. Our, our back truck was approaching over $10,000 for repairs. Now, are you, you're, you're happy with your program on very, preventative maintenance? Very. You know exactly what vehicles you have, mm -hmm. load them in yep. there, your frequency, have, every, yep. frequency of preventative maintenance, what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Somebody's done it, mm -hmm. signed off on it with yep. labor hours and yep. material. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. In, in the fact of the matter is, we have a lot of vehicles to maintain, oh, and they all add up. About a. Yeah. Mike about knows that. He's got the equipment. He got the vehicles pretty well. Yeah. Okay. On that. Yeah, sir. All right. Uh, we talk about uh, stormwater requirements. Any other questions on vehicle I'm going to let you keep going on the okay. other questions. Stormwater uh, requirements. Uh, Chris has been managing that program. I'm going to let him talk a little bit about uh, why we're budgeting $40,000 for that, that program. That's a 9596. The um, EPA has just released uh, the stormwater permit for the state of Massachusetts. Thanks. I wonder where that was. And, um, it pretty much duplicates. We've been informed that the New Hampshire one will duplicate what's in the Mass one. We did ask in the last round for some major changes. Um, there was some housekeeping changes with how they put the permit together, but essentially it's going to be a very onerous permit to, to maintain. Um, we're facing that we have 160 stormwater outfalls around town. They want us to catalog all 160 of them. Catalog meaning put a sign up, post, um, <coughs> picture. They want it added to an asset management plan, something similar to what we're doing for the vehicles. And then on top of that, they want us to grab samples every time it rains, um, at least for the first year, to, and test for seven uh, parameters, uh, pH, chloride, uh, some chemicals. Uh, mainly copper and heavy metals, and in there it just t would, will tend to snowball, meaning that whatever you find, you have to then track down, investigate, and eliminate. Um, the other major factor of it is it's a heavy bookkeeping process. So um, specifically, what they're going to be looking for is within every acre of our town, they want to know how much is paved and how much isn't. And then they want you updated every year to tell them 
if XYZ Hotel went in and they took out three buildings and put up seven and impervious area was 80%, they literally want you to go with a housekeeping record and keep track of this. And then I'm seeing from some of the members that you're understanding that it's going to be a very burdensome thing. Last year we had in 55,000. Um, we trimmed it down to 40 only because we realized at that time that the EPA was not going to be able to react in a timely fashion. And so they, we probably didn't need all that money. Um, I have started with, we did order the signs to track the 160 uh, outfalls, but we didn't go any further with that. We didn't buy the post. We didn't start with any of that. We didn't order any of our uh, sampling equipment that we're going to need. We're basically going to have to equip about five teams of our own staff to go out and sample when these things occur. Um, the sewers you're talking about? Stormwater. Storm 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 I mean, the, the, the drains and the roads. The drains, yeah. right. Chris, I'm listening to you as we're going back and forth between the different years. Is it possible for you to break down the, the individual cost? This is the 40000 is lumped together because we're, it seems that some things are coming out of money that has already been Correct. put in the till. And will any of that money be encumbered and move forward? Yes, we would try. I think we would try and encumber the money. Like, I know what my posts are going to cost me. I would try and like to encumber that. So if it well, our landing is going to be a little softer. We're just getting around to looking at the asset software that we're going to need mm -hmm. to manage this. Um, so if I had to give you of the 40000 how would I proportion it or cut my pie? I'd say 25% is going to go to lab work, 25% is going to go to field work, 25% is going to go to probably software upgrades, and the other 25% is going to be sucked up in labor. I mean, do we have actual costs on these things? All I've done is I looked at the number of areas we have, the number of outfalls we had. I looked at the uh, lab costs. We did ask the lab if you have to test these seven, seven parameters what it's going to cost me. Um, some of them can be done in-house. There's only one of the seven that I would actually leave town to be done. Mm -hmm. um, it was from that that we came up with, in the, the original estimate, the 55000 And at this point, the same thing's going to happen. The, the EPA is going to lag and come in late in the year, mm -hmm. late in what I call this year, early in fiscal year 2015, and then there will be a six-month ramp-up process. When well, that happens, we'll, and we get the final permit, we'll be able to give you, a, I think, a tighter assessment. You didn't budget anything in 14 for this. Yes, we did. I don't, yeah. There's nothing there. Oh, Stormwater requirements are showing a That's 2014 the budget. budget is the fall budget. Because, because of the fall budget. Fall when budget. we sat here a year ago, we talked yeah. about taking it from 55 to I think, Eileen, that the, the point, there's a couple of factors here. One is that we have yet to receive our final permit from the EPA, so we don't know exactly at this point what the requirements are going to be. But we have a, um, a number of communities in the Seacoast area has formed a group, the Seacoast Correlation for Stormwater Rules and Regulations, and Chris is a member of that group, and they get together on a monthly basis and talk about, you know, how we're going to be compliant, you know, how to be in best in compliance with these new regulations. Well, one, we don't know exactly what those regulations are. We've got an idea. But they also have been talking about costs for each community. And each community right now is somewhat of a guesstimate to what these costs are going to be because it's a brand new program. It's not something that we've had experience with. We know the major details of it that, like he said, we're going to have to be taking samples. And But they're talking about about do you have to take samples at every single event, which could happen at 2 o'clock in the morning, so we may have to have someone come in at 2 o'clock in the morning, or do you do it twice a year or something? So we're just, the, the $40,000 is definitely an estimate at this point, but it's not just a wild estimate. It is after talking to what other communities are. And if you talk to any of the other Seacoast communities, Greenland, Portsmouth, or any of the other ones, they'll, they'll tell you the same thing. Right now it's just a guesstimate, but they're trying their best to get make sure that they're going to have enough money in 2015 to meet the obligations for costs that we're going to have. And do you have an, an exact date of implementation? No. No. No, so we don't even know if it'll be. It sounds like there's a lot that has to settle down, so it may not even. Could be June of 15. 
could be. Um, if you could furnish this committee with just a, a quick bridge sure. on where you came up with that, how much you have left from what was put aside from last year. There wasn't anything put aside. There wasn't from anything last put year. aside. No. You requested fifty five thousand. Right. No, I didn't end up at forty thousand dollars what we ended up yeah, with when that. then we went to the default budget, so it took that money out of there. Because okay. that was the first year that we put it in. So we didn't have the, in two thousand and thirteen is what the default budget went to. In 2013, we didn't have any money in there. Mm -hmm. So our budget, this year's budget, is the 2013 budget. There was nothing in there in for there. that. Right. But we did put in for this, the last, for the 2014 budget, and it was approved. Well, let me tell you. I mean, uh, yeah, 2000, no, 2014, no. 2014, we had put in $40,000 we took 20 of it out. Right, we took 20 of it to roads, do Fairfield, Bruce, and Belmont. Right. The time, we had this conversation last yeah. year. Yeah, right. He's right. right. The same conversation. Mm -hmm. and, the, and at the time, you didn't know when the regulations were going to go into effect. Right. And then you took 20 of that 40. Remember when we yep. discussed okay. moving okay. the roads, yeah. pay, yep. paving the three roads? And, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the same money. And because we had a default budget, it doesn't show up. It doesn't show up. Right. And it never happened. Right. So right. just so I'm clear, the signs that you've gone ahead and audited, is coming out of where? We took it out of sign budget. <laughs> now you're treating the water at the wastewater treatment plant. Any mm -hmm. issues show up in the testing there? We treat <laughs> toilet sink water at the wastewater water. treatment plant. We don't treat parking lot and roadside water. And that's just, this is what they're talking. The EPA is talking about. This is drainage water. The oh. money for the signs came out of this account, but I need to offset it because there's no money because of the default budget. I need to offset it from <coughs> other areas in the budget. Mm -hmm. So it didn't necessarily, I just correct Chris, it didn't yeah. necessarily come out of the, 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 the uh, signed budget. <coughs> if you look at our budget report, it, it actually came out. In fact, I'm not sure. It doesn't show up there, oh. but it does show up on my um, report that I get, my appropriation report that I just got, the expense out of that item. I know that I have to offset that by um, you know, under spending some other account. Mm -hmm. uh, we realize that, and the only thing is, is that when there is no money in one line, mm -hmm. it needs to come from another line. And there's been a lot of echoing about roads and repairs, and I don't want to get into it in detail now, but I think it's very important that we know when you're buying something that there was no funds for, it's coming out of somewhere. Oh, street and signs, you say? This, no, no. Yeah, no, but well. I'm just saying, I think it's important for us to know where this money is being shifted from. Right, um, and, and I know that you're going to, you know, I know because of the questions that you're going to be, there's been questions <laughs> about why aren't we spending money like the $26,000 for sidewalk repair, or why didn't we spend the full amount that was budgeted for um, the uh, storm drain system repairs or the sewer repairs. And in this world that I live in with budgeting, I still have to, you know, nothing, it, you can't pinpoint, I've got over a $5 million budget. It's hard to pinpoint every single item, but I am very mindful of how I spend the money. So when I spend money out of an account, I make sure that there's money in a different account that's available to use. But on top of that, and I know we're probably a little premature, but I might as well get it out on the table right now, whether it's the sidewalks or storm drain account or sewer replacement account, I still, I've, I'm already over on my snow removal budget from, from three months, January, February, and March. I've still got to be geared up financially to have enough money for the end of November and for all of December. So if I spend $150,000 for three months, it's conceivable that two months, where, you know, fair enough, we're halfway through the month, could cost us $100,000, just a couple of snowstorms. So I'm holding off spending money in certain areas because I don't want to go over on the overall budget because I have no contingency money available. That's the problem when you have, for public works, when you have a budget that's based on a calendar year versus a fiscal year, the communities that have it as a fiscal year, you figure you, you, you get the whole budgeted, you know, the whole winter budgeted, 
But for me, it's every year since I've been here, it's been a conundrum because I'm always right on the line of, um, you know, going over on my budget. So I think it's prudent to hold back on some of the non-essential expenditures to make sure that, you know, if we do have a major snowstorm or a couple of major snowstorms, that we're going to have sufficient funds not to go over overall on my budget. Please, what did you do with that? What did you do with that crystal ball I gave you? <laughs> and we do realize, Keith, that this was a very difficult year. That you know, pretty much blew the budget before we we got halfway through the year where snow removal was concerned. So we'll all pray that we get. Where through. are you holding back on? <laughs> Just what I said, uh, the sidewalks, we, I, I even d I put out a bid to do the sidewalk work. We didn't have one bidder that came in to do the work because I was hoping to be able to, at a minimum, towards the end of the year, see how the snowstorms went. And then I, if I got someone to bid on it and the contract work, then I would go ahead and put in a PO at the end of the year and do the work in the spring to get no bidders. But in the other, th the, the three major areas that I've held back in is um, the, the storm drain system repairs and the sewer repairs and the sidewalks. Those are the three major areas that I've with I'm, and, and this is through discussions with the town manager before he uh, left for a surgery. We talked about this very issue and he agreed with me that I had to refrain from spending that money to make sure to the best of my ability that we don't go into the red come December 31st. You're, you're 906000 underspent as we speak through October. For, for the entire budget? Mm -hmm. yeah, she's still well, that's, yeah, but if you look at the entire budget percentage of where we're at for the end of, I think it's the end of um, October. Se uh, October, we still have November and December. If you project that out, we're just right on cue. Without any snowstorms, without spending that money, we're... <coughs> We're right where we um, should be, in theory. If I didn't have to worry about the snowstorms, I'd be fine. I'd go ahead and spend the money, because I'm a big advocate of, of spending the money on the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. yeah, Keith, I remember sitting in 2012, and you went through the same routine. We've got to get, we've got to inventory our drains. We're going to have to clean the drains on a regular basis. We are. We're going to have to test them on a regular basis, and we're going to have to track all of that stuff and log it in, and we're going to have to, you know, have, you know, be on top of it because of storm water one, storm water two, storm water three, or whatever. I've heard the same story tonight. We are. Okay. We are. This year, you asked a question about the next question on the engineering services about the uh, temporary technician. That was, um, we hired a, 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 um, an intern out of UNH, to come down with my engineering technician, and they've spent the entire summer going out, taking, you've probably seen them around town with the, tramp, with the uh, level, and they've been taking elevations. We've surveyed the sewer system, the storm drain system, we've made maps, now we're going around to take the elevation. So we're continuing, don't think we're not doing any work, I'm just talking about the major projects for stormwater repairs and stuff, that is, is, is non-essential at this point compared to <coughs> covering payroll costs and covering, uh, you know, fuel bills and, and uh, bills to dispose of our solid waste. Uh, I don't have any more comments on that. I, I'm just saying I've heard the story before. It should be finished by now. We should be done. There should be no 40K. For Jerry, there'll be no finish. No, well, no, it's ongoing. Be, no, 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 it's but not you, gonna, you talked about like a, a non-recurring effort to, to, to go on. It is on. a non-recurring effort because the infrastructure is in such rough shape. Thank you. Keith, is there anything else you want to add to the section? Not on that section. Not on that section. Okay. Well, then, there have been some silent members of the cast here. Michael, do you have any questions? Oh, I have a whole bunch of questions. And uh, I want to go back and touch that 9.03% increase. I'm just totally uh, confused about that. If you get 9.03%, uh, let me get back on the right pages here, because I was ready to ask all these questions when you were covering it. Now I've lost my page. 92. I lost, 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 lost my mind, too. Do you want us anyway, to come back I'm, to you at the end? No, I'll begin. Um, I'm looking at the administration wages are 9.03 on OBS 10, just to make it real quick and simple. Yeah. I don't understand how you can get 9.03% if nobody gets anything but 3% increases, because 3% times the whole crowd would be a 3%. So it was please explain, uh, please, excuse me, uh, please uh, explain that, how you get the 9.03. Because there are step increases. And how much are they percentage-wise? 
They, I don't have that broken down right at the front, right, right now. But those are part of the 9.03. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's not a result of adding any new staff. There's no new staff proposed for 2015. I got that part, but that's all contractual, Mike. Excuse I, me. I understand Mike, that. One just minute. One minute. We, um, Jamie would like to add yeah, something. Mike, if I could just add something to that that might help you is that keep in mind how long the SEA was without a contract. That when they settle that, for example, an employee, if there's multiple steps, if an employee's at step one and when that contract will expire, and then seven years later, they may have taken multiple jumps. So you got to understand that there's a there's a whole bunch of possibilities. It's not a straight linear number. Somebody may have been on step number five and then move seven years later up to a different step or across two steps. So that's why it's not linear like you're doing. So what you're saying, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, is that some people got over 10% raises to make it 903. There's a possibility. I think some employees did get a 10% raise that haven't got raises for seven years. I think that's a possibility. Okay. Can I just add something in there, Mike? I went over it before, okay? When we think of a raise, it's doing the same job year to year. What these people had attained was steps in the union, which is something different. And they achieved their tests or their steps with certain criteria. While they weren't, while we were not passing their contracts, they still proceeded as far as attaining their steps. They just didn't get paid for it. So it's basically retroactive. So basically, that's why I said it's a catch-up <coughs> year. It, it was not, not retroactive. No. no. Well, it's not retroactive, but kind of it brings it. It them from it here. It, these are the I steps. What you're you went from here to here. Yeah, I know. Okay, so it made a huge, uh, what well, looks like a huge increase for maybe some people, but it's for everything they didn't get. And quite honestly, they missed the money in those years. They're only being paid at the level that they've attained currently. Now that have been, Chairman. I understand that completely, having okay. been there, done that. Um, so the bottom line is that some probably got in excess of ten percent with no sweat. That's all I really want to know because 9.03 percent is a huge increase, considering that you mentioned only two or three percent, and then talked about steps. But like you say, if you add two or three steps in there, there are going to be some that got substantial increases. Mm -hmm. Okay, that explains that one. Okay, now back on the maintenance and so forth. I was concerned not so much about the maintenance cost itself because I know that. As vehicle gets older, things just sort of fall apart, like some of the cars I have. They have to have a little extra attention. But I'm concerned by the fact that we have so many pickup trucks. We have a pickup truck for about almost every person. There's 18 pickups or something like that. I went through this, I think, the last year, the year before with you about this. You said, well, we had 19. We traded one in, so we had one less than we had before when you bought the car that really graded me, and I won't get into that. But so why do we need 18 pickup trucks if we're having a maintenance problem to start with? Are there any pickup trucks in the budget for 2015? No, I mean, if, if we... We're cutting back, Mike. The answer is we're cutting back. We have been, Chris and I, and with our managers, have been looking at all our vehicles. Yeah. And that's one reason why we haven't put any pickup trucks in the... Um, budget for 2015 because we're evaluating mm -hmm. the use of all our trucks. We bought GPS units that we've put in our snow. One of our driving forces for our fleet mm -hmm. is um, snow plowing. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a huge cost. So now we're evaluating, we've put GPS units, I think we've got four of them and we've got it set up that each storm will track it and we We'll map out the the um, the, uh, the routes, and we're trying to balance out the routes because what we found for what we found going through this GPS system is that some cloud routes were taking four to five hours, and some were taking one and a half hours. So Chris has been putting a lot of effort into this to balance those out. But that's only one component. The other component is, should we have a pickup truck doing it, or should we have a, um, a, a, a one-ton doing it? One-ton's more productive, 
in some respects, but the thing that works against us in Hampton is the roads. You can't, you know, some of our roads are so, you know, dead ends and so narrow that you really can't get it. So it's, it's complicated, but what I can assure you is, and this is again, not to keep repeating myself, but we are looking at our whole fleet overall in trying to trim out the number of vehicles that we have. We're working on that as we speak. Well, I think that's good because I remember last year or the year before last, maybe it was last year, we got a lot of complaints about from uh, residents of the town saying, oh, they come by at the pickup truck and they did a look, quote unquote, not such a hot job, in other words. It didn't do as well as they expected. And I think there's a merit to that because when you have a big truck pushing the plows with the weight, it's going to do a better job of plowing the road. I don't think there's any debate about that. So you're looking at that real close to see where we can fit in a bigger truck to eliminate some of the pickup truck complaints that we had. Is yes. that what you're doing? Yes. Okay, good. That's and, good. And the other effort that we have, and, you'll, and there's another question here that Jerry had about the uh, why is the, uh, um, I can't remember the name of the, end of the winter plowing, out contractual services, why'd that go up? What we're trying to do is now, for the first time, we're privatized two of our routes. We've always had one privatized downtown um, parking lots. Mm -hmm. But by privatizing the, those two routes, we're not going to be have to buy those two trucks. If, if we had, if we didn't have to look at the capital costs, it's cheaper for us to do it. But I know that it's cheaper to contract some of those out so that we don't have to make that capital investment. So what, what my point is that we're trying. We're really trying in house. Believe me, I'm I'm a great believer in not having any more vehicles than we absolutely need. Mm -hmm. But we have to look at you know does it make sense this year to sell a vehicle or let it run out you know its age and break down or whatever. There's a lot of factors that go into it. I know. But we are making an effort to cut back on our fleet. No, I think that's probably a good idea. Thank you, Keith, for that. And there was a couple other questions. I was looking at highway maintenance on page 98. We haven't got to that yet. I'm sorry, no. that's the next one. Is that part of this or not? No. 98? No. Okay, so next section. Okay, I had a couple of other questions, too. Can I come back later with a couple more questions? On this section? Yeah. Yeah, Just on this to section. keep it going. Yeah. Um, Joe? Jerry, I'm skipping over. No, my, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, my only question is, in your regular wages, you said you, you no new positions, but yet you have a new position laborer and new position light equipment operator. So it's got pulled from the budget. Okay. No, no questions. I'm sure that it'll all, it'll all come out. So. <laughs> I have a couple of comments. I think you guys do a great job, the staff. I think you're dealing with an older fleet that you have to keep maintenance, and I think that's a pain. I think you have to deal with Mother Nature, which you can't tell what Mother Nature is going to do, and plus you have to deal with government agencies, and you don't know what the heck they're going to do. So I think I think being you know looking for an exact, exact, exact. I don't think you. you I agree. I don't think you can do it. I think you can. It's difficult come up to pin the best down. Estimate to come up with. <clears throat> Very good. I, I think you do a really good job of doing that, and uh, well, I commend you. Thank you. We're trying to do the best with Mother we can. Nature and the government. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got a couple of things here. The first one is a document issue. Page 94. You have a, under supplies and expenses, you have a line item for 4311.1.680. Oh. 680? Yeah. Doesn't exist. Supplies, bearing expenses. 430. Okay. I'm just. I'm sure it's just a mistake, but there's no conforming. Mm -hmm. Is that what's under in the budget? Six one zero. What well, page are we on again? Yeah, it so does. Page page I would assume so. Ninety four. That just needs to be six one zero. Christy, can we ask you on that one? It appears that. It's a, yeah, it's a typo. Just a typo. yeah, I'm just. That's all I was bringing up for. Which one is the correct one? Six one zero or six eight zero? I am looking that up for you right now. Thank I believe you. it would be the six one zero is correct. Okay. 
Yeah, actually, the two on the bottom there are both right. Right. That's the cycle. Is the back of the list. 23,000 ties. Oh, I just noticed. Six one. Certain things pop out in your head, I guess. And the building is either the be six thirty. So the six one zero is correct, and the six three zero is correct. Yeah, it's just the six the six one zero and not six eight zero. Um, could you please explain the reimbursed maintenance labor? Yeah. Under, yes. That's on page 91. Yes, that, that's when we do work on the other departments, police, fire, building inspection. We do a cross billing to help cover, to help subsidize the cost of the additional uh, full-time mechanic, <laughs> professional mechanic, and the part-time mechanic. So when the police department comes in and they have a cruiser that comes in for maintenance, we track that, and we also will send them a bill for that work, and that shows up as a credit there to help offset the cost of that service. Uh, my understanding was they were paying for this. They are. It wasn't coming out of your budget. It isn't. But it's a negative. That's right. That's why right, it's a negative. That's, right. That's why it shows up as you know, a credit. Budget. It's a negative. So that's being reduced from the line, bottom line. Right. Just kind of. And it's represented in what revenues? Is that how it's going in, Christy? No. It's just reducing that bundle, like you said. But then you're charging out police and fire. Yep. So it's being charged. So in essence, it's being charged against the county of police or fire or recreation. Right. Okay, or and then it's going into their budget as a negative. Into as an expense, that. yeah. Credit. That's what I'm just trying to follow. Credit as an expense. As a credit, right. So they have an item in the, their budget yes. for, just like we do, vehicle maintenance. Mm -hmm. So that would be a reduction in that right. account, and then it's transferred over to help offset. The, and we're not trying to make any money off the no. deal. We're just trying to offset the cost. I'm just trying to follow right. the line right. of where this is all Yeah, an internal offset. And going. So that... <clears throat> um, Back to Mr. Pierce's, you also have four vehicles you're asking for in warrant articles. We're not talking. We're not, going, we're not, we're not doing warrant, warrant articles right no, now. No, but I'm just bringing that fact up. Well, none of them. Are, the, 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 the point is that none of them are vehicles. Yeah, but then not one of them is a pickup truck. That was my point. <laughs> Brian, that'll just confuse tonight. Let's yeah. leave it for the warrant article discussion. I'm sure we'll have plenty of conversation then. Um, good Thank you. Um, I have one more question, I think. Nope, it's on the next one. I'll say, thank you. Uh, just a brief explanation on the overtime wages. I see. I'm not complaining about it, mind you. I like reductions like that. But the, the overage is a result of um, one thing I've done over, I think it was two years ago, was to segregate out all the um, costs associated with snow removal, and I moved money from different accounts. Before I did that, the overtime, winter overtime was spread out amongst all the accounts. So if you typically work at the transfer station, you plow snow, it would show up as a expense out of the transfer station account, wastewater, whatever. What we've tried to do is segregate that out so that we can show the community what the full you know, cost of snow plowing is. And um, we've been working on that, but one loose end was the um, some of the uh, man, uh, supervisors was still out of that account, so there was ten thousand dollars approximately in that account that should have been applied to the snow overtime account, but it wasn't. But if you look at the snow overtime account, you'll see where we increased that by ten thousand dollars, and we decreased the amount that we're asking for for next year to correct that. <coughs> so we should come back and put a note to remember that. Sure. I'll remember it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So we, systematically, we haven't reinvented the wheel. We've just put things in the place that they belong. We're, that's what we're trying to do. In other words, you reduced it in this line item and beefed it up somewhere else. Should we have in the snow the removal. Snow removal. Right. Should we just put it in the middle? So no problem with that. Um, 
We can make a notation of that. Uh, Madam Chairman, that was a question I had to left. If you want me to follow up on that, I can. Uh, same question is what I was going to ask. If you're on me. just this one question? You... Yeah, that was All it. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, the problem I have with this, uh, the overtime account, and I know you explained it about the snow, but it seems like I, every month of report that I re look at, it seems like it's increasing for administration. And I can't figure out why we'd be having a constant increase in administrative overtime all year long. Maybe during snow removal, but what, the snow stopped sometime in, I think it was March, maybe? So I'm a little confused about that, because all summer long I was looking at that, and that overtime for administration just keeps creeping up. There's a couple of components there. One is the um, we have to cover the cost of overtime for the elections, and depending on how many elections there are, um, I guess next year, and I don't keep track of it, all I'm told is we have to provide resources, manpower to do the elections. But the other thing is the cost of the overtime increases as these employees get their raises as well. So the cost of the overtime increases for those two factors. <laughs> There's no unusual event. It's not like all of a sudden we're doing anything that out of the ordinary to require more overtime. Um, the overtime is the overtime, and if we need to provide a service or respond to emergencies, we have to do it. And it, it, it's really not a lot of control over overtime. Maybe I didn't phrase the question right. This is, is overtime in administration. I can see if you have guys out running the snowplow trucks, yeah, they're going to get paid overtime. Maybe if you have to spend some extra money picking up the trash in the summertime, I can see that. But a supervisor getting regularly yes. scheduled overtime? Yes. They're, they're not salaried? No. 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 No I don't get overtime. Chris doesn't. Right. The senior management team doesn't get overtime. We're non-union. We don't get any overtime. So where does this uh, overtime be, accumulate from then? Uh, emergency call out. Say that the police department calls up and says there's a tree down on, you know, um, High Street. Yeah. Then we have to have a foreman go out and he'll evaluate it. Do we need to call in a private, you know, um, Tree, tree, tree maintenance person, and do we handle it ourselves? So the first line is when the first call comes in, one of those managers will come in and evaluate the system, and then he'll decide on if he needs any support at that point. So, And just like with um, voting, we need to have a supervisor come in to oversee that operation. So the foreman get the overtime? Yes. Okay, but the okay. person that comes in... What a chainsaw or something. His money would come out of his own budget in some other part of that. Yeah, we, I would think that over time. If you look at the, the list, guys, if you look at, like, if you look at count one, the regular wages, it lists out all of the types of employees that are in that account. Yeah. yeah. You'll see there are laborers and other people in there as well, which yeah. are hourly employees. That's the administrative section they're in. So, if we, A lot of our overtime call-outs are also due to, due to dig safe, where yeah. gas company calls and says we've got a leak at XY intersection. We're required by law to go out and, and map it. Why wouldn't now, my question though is why wouldn't that overtime be in uh, distributed to the correct allocation? In other words, like storm drainage or whatever for that particular one. Because it's not storm drainage; it's an emergency call out by either <laughs> Unitil or the gas right. company. So it's, and it all just comes in. Okay, in the so just a second on this subject. Okay, I'm all I sorry. think it's the terminology that is confusing people. That's it. When you say administrative. The, the concept is we're talking about somebody sitting up in an office. Right. Maybe it should be supervisory overtime or foreman's overtime. Again, I think, I, I'm, I don't know, Mike. Maybe that's, that's, that's probably 90% of it, yeah. Is, there, is it that? Well, the other feel? thing, though, is got carpenters okay. and laborers. No, when you say administrative, you think of somebody sitting at a desk. Okay. Uh, I agree. Mike, all you guys. And it's not. We've had a lot of time over on this end, and... I think a tag on this, there'll always be somebody who will look at it another way. Good explanation has been given tonight, and I think we all thoroughly understand now what it is. Moving on, Mike, do you have any questions? Uh, about a year ago, you asked about a uh, job on Barber Road for drainage. <coughs> you put the two catch bases at Sherman Drive. Then you went down to the Victory Garden and put in a pond, a mm -hmm. few sticks of pipe, and left. Are we abandoning that job, or are you holding back on the pipe between the manholes and the pond until you have drainage money available to 
do that? Actually, neither. Neither? We bought the pipe. We have it in storage. <laughs> We've been bought and paid for it. It was also, it was, majority of it was paid for by uh, the developer of the Sherburn Green yeah. Sherburn yeah. Uh, Drive. Right. Um, we put the two basins in at the Sherburn Drive because we had a deadline to get that work done before a certain date or we had to give the money up. So we went to the other end where the water is eventually going to come out, yeah. started there and started laying pipe. The understanding that I have with my sewer and drain department is after they finish drain cleaning, catch basin cleaning, sewer main televising and cleaning, storm drain cleaning when the leaves fall, and all the other myriad of tasks that we ask them to do, like clearing out all the brush, all the trees around the Victory Garden and any other number of things that we got asked to do, that they would go back to that project. As you can see, there was no time this year to go back to that project. But we, well, we do have plans to go back. The other problem is if it isn't done, then we get another storm event, you could have... <laughs> compounded the problems over well, on those basins that were put in at Sherburn are open bottom basins so any water that goes in them is hopefully going to go out the bottom right so but, but the intent was to pipe it down oh yeah the intent is yeah then that is still the intent so the, hasn't, the project hasn't still fallen through the cracks it's on hold projects on the board given given time now if we don't get any snow this winter you'll probably see them over there because all the pipes going to be laid off the edge of pavement we don't have to break pavement to do it right except for the driveway. Uh, <laughs> but the point is, it's an allocation of time and resources. Well, I just, it's just yeah. been, no, been a long time. I just thought that it either fell through the cracks or... Oh, no. I've got five or six just like that yeah. projects that I'd love to go back to. <coughs> well, it needs to be kept on the horizon and it is. put it in the system. It's my pet project. Pet project? Well, you know, you, come, you, yeah. you take on certain things and you want to see them done. Yeah. And then... Worked with the guys, came up with the design, and yeah, we want to see it done. That's it, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I have two things. The first thing is <clears throat> that I noticed there are seven sections to these questions, and we've spent over an hour on the first section. We only haven't even finished this side of the room, so you're gonna. This is gonna be a long, long meeting. Um, the other thing is, you mentioned I heard you say privatized plowing. Are you? Are you doing that now? Bringing in somebody like Mike Plouffe to contract, to contract, so you have contractors? Not me. Side construction, or, or it's, it's been it's been open to be these people that have trucks. Right. We put it out to do. Yeah. Okay. We've always done the high street lot. The downtown is one of the two areas. I remember that. And from last, last year. year we experimented with the high street route, but, but this what year, about just hiring? Some outside contractor privatizing to do some of the roads too. Is that something? You well, we to? did. We we asked yeah. them to okay. do. We oh, yeah. had we had them do high street. Oh, okay. And, um, okay. Well, in particular, we uh, wanted to get a grader because a grader. Mm -hmm. The town used to have a grader. Sold them. Sold it years ago. That be that. That's great to have on board to do our main arterial roads, especially if you have like ice pack or something like that, because that can really push down. So now we have that availability to have a grader uh, at our disposal, so that we can you know do those roads there under most conditions that we didn't have the ability before. Yeah. The, the thing when when we were talking about trucks before, and you, one truck was 37 years old, another one was something or other, and. <clears throat> Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not into construction. I don't know about heavy equipment like that. But you can't compare a heavy piece of equipment to, for instance, uh, my car at home, because it's built completely different. Heavy, heavy duty. So, you know, when you say something, if I say, well, I have a car that's 30 years old, you know, it would be an antique. Right. But a truck that's 30 years old, if it's not all rusted out or something, it's still, as long as you keep maintaining it, it's going to give you some performance. And, and, and that's true. In, in our replacement schedule, we don't replace loaders or the large trucks on the same interval as we try to, God forbid, pick up trucks, you oh. know. <laughs> Take that. Out. Uh, but seriously, or, or, you know, cars or whatever, you know, we do take that into account. Right. But the other part of that <laughs> is that, um, a lot of this equipment is our frontline equipment 
for emergencies. And it's not just snow plowing. It can be, it's not that unusual for us to um, need a, uh, I'll put, take a loader out to just get a tree out of the, the road. Just like two weeks ago or three weeks ago, we had a Seabrook drill and one of the items that we had to deal with was a tree that had come down in an intersection and we played it out. Couldn't get any, um, you know, tow truck or anything in there, so we were able to just dispatch a loader to go push the tree out to open up the evacuation route. Now, that's a, a scenario, but, I mean, that could happen oh, yeah. uh, under the circumstances. So we need to be able to rely on this equipment as emergency equipment. It's every bit as important, I feel, as a fire truck or, you know, ambulance or whatever. It all works together, and it's just we need good equipment. Absolutely, Keith. Thank you very much. You do a great job. Thank you. Jim? Jim. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I want to be sure I asked about the grist mill in the right place. Is this the right place yet? No. no. Okay. Not sure. <clears throat> I just got a couple of observations and, and would invite you to comment. Um, last year's Warren article uh, for the budget failed, thus we had a default budget uh, for our operating budget this year. And in our budget books from last year, the default budget for this account, 4311, totaled 1279568. Yet when you go on to the town website and look up the actual default budget, which is required to be posted with the warrant, it reads 1319568 which is exactly difference of $40,000 up. When I compare each of these line items under 4311, I see we had a wage increase, which totaled $20,581, which rightfully would have gone into the default. I also see that we had a career incentive uh, which was not budgeted in 2013, it was budgeted to zero, yet it magically appeared in the default at 1,000. So when you add those two together um, and then subtract the increase of 40,000, you've got a net increase that I cannot find of $18,419 that somehow got put into our operating budget, which was supposed to be reflective of a default budget. Would you get a comment? I'd have to defer any conversations about the development of the um, default budget to either Jamie or or to uh, Christy as far as that goes. But what I will say is, and I I did the numbers there just to give you a a flavor. We compared the operating budget for 2011, what we're proposing was 2015. We're 20% less the budget that we're looking at for 2015 to 2011. And I'll just defer the conversation about the... uh, Christy, can you answer the question on how they come up with those numbers for the default? I didn't come up with the default, and I um, don't have a budget and warrant that you're looking at in front of me, so I'd have to look into it and see. I can tell you the thousand dollars for career incentives. My guess on that is that it was a career incentive that was put into a union contract. That's it is contractual. Yeah. Is that your question about the career and why the thousand dollars? It's more to, the, to go to the default budget number, right? No, there are there are discre- there are basically discrepancies between what this budget committee was presented in the default budget compared to the actual warrant article or the, the default. Uh, budget that was put into the warrant, and that difference is $40,000. Now, I noticed that because it just happened to be the exact same number for the EPA mandate. And I thought, gee, that's kind of curious. So I did some drilling down on that, and I can see that it's not directly related to that, not directly related to that. But still, there are discrepancy remains. I can explain the, uh, I can explain $20,581 because that was a wage increase. Presumably that was legitimate to go into the default budget. If the career incentive was also a union or contractual based thing, then that was proper for it to go into the default budget as well. Okay. However, 
it still leaves a discrepancy of $18,419 between what this budget committee was presented in its budget book last year for a default budget compared to what was actually put into the warrant, which I am looking up presently on the uh, town uh, website. Um, so I'm just like uh, curious, how could that be? Christy will have to answer that. Well, I thought maybe you had some insight on it. And you did offer me some insight with regard to the career incentive. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. And I'll uh, point out that, you know, uh, the confusion on the uh, EPA mandate, which was an exciting co topic last year, as you may recall, mm -hmm. uh, kind of got confused because just after the election, uh, Mary Louise Wolsey Sleckman uh, inquired about whether or not they should be readjusting the budget to reflect the default, you know, in terms of the line items. And everyone said, no, 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 no. And she asked about the EPA mandate. And, and, and the town manager, Fred Wells, said, well, no, well, that's been reserved, all $40,000. So that statement led many to believe, including myself, that reserved meant it was somewhere in the default budget, because I don't know how else you can reserve it. But, in fact, I can't find it anywhere in the actual warrant of the default budget, just so you know that. So the reason why there's confusion is because there's a lot of conflicting statements coming from both the print and warrant and officials. So I just want to clarify that. It still remains something of a mystery. And so if you want to comment, that's fine. Otherwise, I have nothing to further I can't comment topic. on the okay. town manager's comment, um, to be honest with you. I'm not, again, I'm not trying to be evasive, but I, I really I am not that. involved with how the fall budget is structured and whatever. I put together what we need to spend. You know, the, the, my directive was come up with a proposed budget that you feel is necessary to run the town. To run no, the I can only budget. ask. I can only ask you what you know, and you did yeah. clear up the career incentive thing, which was, okay. you know, one little <laughs> tick going further down the road of righteousness, and that's good. That's good. Okay. <laughs> thank you. We're good. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> In the hope of speeding up this process, I have no questions. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to slow it down a bit then. Uh, Keith, on page 82, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, 92, on uh, the adjustment for regular wages, I see that the, the position of laborer and light equipment operator has been crossed out. Correct. Which means that... Uh, that has been eliminated, right? By the town manager, yes. Right. But you know, we have seen some of the drafts of warrant articles. Is there going to be a warrant article for those two positions? No. There is not. All right. I'm just going to cross that. But to my understanding, yeah, not that we're preparing. Based on conversation with you, with the acting town manager, that those are not going to be. No warrant article on those two positions. That's my understanding. All right. So, all right. <laughs> Which brings me to. Page, go to page 96. And the new equipment, sidewalk sweeper attachment. Mm. Didn't we buy an attachment for that sweeper last year? No, it was in the budget for last year. It was in the budget. Yep. And it did get approved. But wasn't now, there an, didn't it include this no, attachment? We back to the um, default the budget. Default. Right. So we weren't able to buy it. You're not oh, all right. I, I, again, I just wanted to no, clarify it, that. It was right? approved in this committee. I guess the questions we have as we go along, we know there's reorganization and all money sinks to the bottom line right. when we have a default year. Everything that we voted for last year, look at it as going to a bottom line, not necessarily <coughs> having been purchased because there was no money, no new money to right. do that. However, that being said, we are unaware, sitting here, how things were maneuvered through the year. And if you needed that sweeper, I'm sure that money would have come out of some other line to be able to do it. So pardon some of our questions, Keith, as we go along, but on the day-to-day -day basis, we lose track of what fell victim to a default budget or what was reorganized in a default budget and ultimately paid for and purchased. Well, that's it. You know, I, we can under, I think we understand your frustration of trying to maintain that bottom line. And at times, yes, it's necessary for you to move things to cover the expenses of what comes up, the plowing and so on. <coughs> but again, it, it's kind of uh, not frustrating, but 
you know, when we sit here and we review these budgets, we look at a particular line item and say, gee, you know, this looks pretty good. And then you find out by the end of the year, it's gone. <laughs> Uh, so uh, again, I, I just brought, I'm just bringing that up. Well, so, if I may, you know, go ahead. since I've been here, <clears throat> I've been under the direction that you can't go over the budget right. at the end I of the agree. year. I okay? agree. Okay, and I think last year was the first year I went over by like three thousand dollars, and out of a five million dollar budget, I don't think that was too bad in three years, taking into account. But I plan ahead, and that's again why. I'm trying to, as much as I'd like to do work on these other things, I'm withholding mm -hmm. money so that I make sure that we don't go into the red. But like Arlene says, you know, as things go along through the year, we're not cognizant of all of these, oh, yeah, no, all these ma maneuvers these that happen. And I'm, I'm good that, with that. That's why yeah. we ask these questions. Sure, right? absolutely. <clears throat> now, uh, your assistant came, brought up a point about this on the major, major repairs for vehicle maintenance. And he quoted something like over $8,000 for major equipment repairs on some of the uh, vehicles. And again, uh, I know we're not discussing the, uh, the justification for warrant articles or whatever, but in the drafts that I've seen for warrant articles, that there is a proposal for some vehicles. Yeah. And it does say a three-quarter ton pickup. Mm. And we said we're not going to go into the No, I, I know. We're not going to get into the, 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 good, oh. the, the good or the bad, but is... Well, at some point in time. Okay. But I think he's associating the issue of the pickups with what was brought up before about the concern with the pickup. Right. In my mind, from, from my standpoint, a three-quarter ton pickup for this pur purpose is not in the same category as a three-quarter ton pickup that you're talking I mean, a, a half a ton pickup, which you're talking about. So I didn't mean to mislead you, but in, in my mind, I, I view the two as totally separate. One's coming. I wouldn't take a half ton pickup as a worn article, whereas a three-quarter ton truck is significantly more cost, has a whole different, you know, um, use, much but more I, energy know, I, use. What I'm looking at is uh, hopefully if you get some, if the warrant article passes and you get some of this equipment, that we'll see major repairs drop. Or and that's the hope eventually, especially with the having the extra mechanic, <laughs> full-time mechanic, right. and the mechanics help it. That's what we're trying to do. But it, there's a lag period, and it's going to take some time to get caught up. All right, that's, that's all Just I clarify what, yeah, that, what that unit is. Right. That unit is specifically unit 24. That's also the same unit that we had the transmission go on earlier the this major, summer. One right. of the major, yeah. So we repla it, it happens to be Bobby Walker's truck. It's used many days of the year. Uh, uh, there isn't, it's used to, um, we do all the sewer and drain locations for it, all, all those dig safe calls that we get. Mm -hmm. That's the truck that responds to all those. Bobby's assigned certain routes um, because that's his truck, and, and one of those routes is Beach Plum Way, when it comes down to snow plowing, because he gets in there, it's a heavy enough truck to handle the street, but not so much that he get, ends up doing any damage with it, because Bobby slices bread with that truck, to be honest with it, when it comes to snow plowing. So that's the right piece of equipment for the right guy for the right usage. So maybe we will not see some of this heavy uh, right. major repair So you expense. wouldn't see another 3,000. Right. We didn't know whether... We don't. We still don't know whether we're, we're going to have to live with 24 for a whole year or or repair it. So the decision was made: repair the truck, repair it because it's that critical. That's all I have. Thank okay. you. Uh, just one question. In yep. fact, um, I had almost forgotten it. Dig say, are you reimbursed by the homeowners? Oh, oh no. So it's a unfunded mandate well, in your department. It is and it isn't. It's, um, to be honest with you, we think it saves us some money hmm. because you know, we find that, that um, people replacing a sewer mm -hmm. didn't realize that um, that required a, per a permit. They, they're going. We like the fact they're going from clay to plastic, but it still requires mm -hmm. a permit. Uh, they didn't come down to get one, but we, oops, there it appears on dig safe. Or um, hey, I'm ripping out my driveway. And I'm making it five feet wider, and oh, I'm making it looped. Oops, got dig safe involved, but didn't elect. So, in those, from that perspective, it's saving us a lot of heartache, uh, preventing things getting broken or disturbed that we then have to <coughs> handle in an emergency situation. Okay. So we like it in, from that perspective, um, and 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 it didn't. 
when it comes to the emergency water call outs and unitil call outs in the middle of the night, we were always getting those calls anyhow. Sure. They were just calling the house directly. So, mm -hmm. you know, they were calling either Toby or Frank directly, getting them out of bed. So, it, it, it didn't really change it. Good job. Thank you. Uh, most, most of this uh, I get um, seven years without a contract is certainly um, entitled to bump that up whenever it, it happens to come here at night for zero three uh, replacement of equipment. Um, one of the questions I had, though, if you can educate me a little bit, snow removal. Um, and I know this gets a little convoluted in the thing, but the snow removal on the sidewalks on Ocean Boulevard, what's, what's with that? We don't do any snow removal on Ocean Boulevard, whether it's the sidewalks or the road. We are doing Ashworth Ave, the um, westerly side of Ashworth Ave, <coughs> that's Town Road. And, and we've got priorities set up where, like, the first priority is um, uh, the sidewalks to the schools that the kids walk on, and then the second priority is, like, the, um, you know, downtown area and, and the... Um, the major roads, and then the third priority is to do Ashworth now because we've had complaints with the parents down there that the kids can't walk to the, you know, to the, the school bus. So, so there's nothing done on Ocean Boulevard, and what about Church Street? From the um, no, there's nothing done on Church Street. That's done by the state. Well, it's not done at all. But. No, I'm sorry. No, no, we do, no, no. I'm sorry. We do. Ch we do ch ch church. Not the, not, the, not the sidewalks. No, no, no. not the sidewalks. The, the, the street. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and that's what I'm asking about. Right. As a public safety um, <clears throat> to, to snow removal, is there anything? We can barely get to the main arterial mm -hmm. road on Ash Ashworth Ave. We have um, just three sidewalk plows, two on our main roads, and. Uh, so uh, we just don't have the resources to do all the sidewalks. In fact, I put in a request to the planning board not to approve any new sidewalks for any developments unless it's on private property where the homeowners are responsible to take care of their own sidewalks because we just don't have the manpower and the equipment to do all the sidewalks <coughs> in town. Are there any sidewalks that are being done? In town? Other than the yeah. Ashworth, yeah. Yeah. In town, all yeah. over town. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Yeah, but yeah. that's why I'm wondering where's the where's the cutoff on the reasoning on like why it's... why we do some but we don't do church. And I understand the state school. rules. Right. Yeah. We we, all, we do all the any yeah. where any of the kids walk to school. We do those. That's a priority. Mm -hmm. We do the downtown mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and then we do certain arterial roads that have been historically done over a period of time. I learned early on in my career, it's very easy to give a service. It's very difficult to take mm -hmm. it away. <laughs> so if you've been doing something for a period of time, you keep doing it if you want to keep your job. And if not, <laughs> so, um, so, but we did add Ashworth Ave mm -hmm. because, like I said, we were getting some water complaints from school parents kids, about yeah. their kids okay. being able to get to the uh, school bus. You do want to count a road sidewalk. Okay. I just want to interject. We're bleeding over into snow removal. Mm -hmm. All right, we're yep. still yes. on administration, yep. mm -hmm. and I let it go because it just seemed to flow that way. But I hope the next section is going to go really quickly. Um, I'd like to end the snow removal so we can end this section, if that's okay with you, Jim. Go ahead. I'm moving on. Do you have any questions on the no, administration? No, okay, thank you. And David, do you have any I, questions I just have on a administration? Quick one. Um, I know there's a point where to repair a vehicle reaches a point where it's really more cost effective to replace it and repair it. I'm just wondering what procedures we use to look at that. How, how do we decide when a vehicle has reached a point where it is more cost effective to replace it than to maintain it? It's, do you have an organized way of keeping track of that? We do. In our long-term equipment replacement schedule, we have a rating that's completed by uh, our mechanics and um, their supervisor, or not the supervisor of the vehicle, but whatever the supervisor is of managing that piece of equipment and our maintenance manager. They'll do it, they'll evaluate the vehicle, and we have a 1 to 10 rating, and we can show that to you where we have a complete inventory. So then we take that, we match it up with the age. But the other part of that formula is that, that and this is where I come in, is we try to balance out the overall budget so that we don't have any dramatic spikes 
So if you just take the rating and the age or whatever, you may have for two years, you may have two or three hundred thousand dollars worth of replacement. But then because of the rating, because of the condition, all of a sudden you have a real big spike of six or seven hundred thousand dollars. So I'll go in and I'll start balancing those out and I'll talk with, you know, with input from my mechanics about we may be um, looking to replace an equipment a little bit earlier to try to offset those dramatic peaks in, in cost. So it's a balancing act. But it's not just based on any one thing. It's a number of factors. And again, we look at the condition of it, the age of it, the <coughs> use of it. You know, if it's a heavy use vehicle, we, uh, we tend to pay more attention to that. The other thing that we do that works good is we trickle down equipment so that, for instance, uh, if we buy a new loader, the highway department will get that and then they'll use it for, say, five to ten years or sewer and drains will use it for five to ten years and then they all end up at the transfer station so that because that's not as a heavier use and it's not as dependent on. So any, you know, the... Um, transfer station manager doesn't like it, but all of his equipment is hand-me-downs because we're trying to get the most use out of our equipment. Thank you. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Repeat the amount for me, Jeff. Oops. Don't let the gas rise until this is all over. Yeah. Do you have a follow up question? 1,506,153. What page was that on? 95. 95. <coughs> Sorry. You want to ask him now? <laughs> no more than 1,506,153. That. Yep. That's it. There was, there was an additional question. Was there? I'm sorry, I didn't look that way. I just want you to get the number All right. Again. Uh, uh, real quick, What's, real yeah. quick, please. Um, on the new, new equipment, Back on page 95, okay. I know that we talked about last year getting that sweeper, it didn't get through, so it's on there this year for $6,000. However, under actual for 2014, there was $13,000 spent. So what did you buy that you hadn't, you know, somehow didn't get? Um, what, what page is that now? On 95. 90, 95, Keith. It's under, yeah, uh, it's, it's account 740, no equipment. There was. Of course, because of the Fourth default budget, down. there was nothing placed in that account, yet there was actually, year to date, $13,000 spent. Do you, do you know what that is, wall? that particular thing? Steve, you should have asked that question in writing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm prepared. thinking. Uh, I'm, you know, it's just, I just <coughs> spotted it, though, Jerry. That's the only thing. That's some sort of sidewalk plow? No. 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 Couldn't. That was good. 2013. Yeah. What's that? It's, it was probably encumbered from 2013. Yeah, carry forward. Okay, thank you. That answers the question. No, thank you. Just the reason. You know what it is? Yes. Okay. Here's the answer. We did, uh, yeah, that's the answer to that. I okay, thank you. What's the answer? It's been encumbered from oh, 2013. Oh, right. 13. The, uh, we don't know what it was. The, the EPA mandate, uh, which we anticipated last year that didn't occur this year, <laughs> uh, are we anticipating it next year, or is it a fact now? It's, we're anticipating it, but from what I understand, they have approved the permit from Massachusetts, and so we're so right in line to get it. Pardon me? It's still not a fact. It's not a fact. Not a fact. I have one little over. Okay. You know, we're going to be here till midnight. Just, this is another really quick one. Have you prepared anything for the CIP committee as far as these vehicles go? Yes. It's right in our book, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Right, but <laughs> yes. we hadn't seen it yet. Okay. I, but I submitted it. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? All those opposed? So, um, well, pay keep your hands up. Keep them up. Oh, I'm sorry. They're going to come. <clears throat> hey, Joe, does roads get paved? No. Nope. <laughs> all right, and S extensions? S. Davey lives on one of them. No extensions. 
Okay. No extensions.